for the formation of activity taking place on the guitar fluently so that the entire fingerboard can become one given topic no matter what it might be uh, it is important to be able to take this basic information of these diminished forms and be able to uh, draw from them the advantage that they offer for, for alterations on any kind of chord that you want to use on any group of strings accordingly so that uh, in, the, in the case of the diminished chord as it initially was on the 4-3-2-1 group it can be applied so that it becomes automatically a dominant seventh chord in the case of this one here E flat seventh or any of the others in it C seventh would be just as uh, appropriate by taking that C seventh and lowering the third of that particular major scale you then take the E and drop that to an E flat it's a C minor seventh and now you have altered that to a functional uh, chordal form for your own vocabulary to uh, more or less just stock up in your, and bank it so you can use it anytime you want it if you take it then and, and alter that by lowering the fifth or raising the fifth in this particular case we're lowering it to a, a, a flat five here's your C minor seven flat five so all of this coordinately um, becomes it comes from the parental form and it breaks off into numerous children and I think that what we're going to be covering now is how to gain dexterity in these in, in within the application uh, throughout the fingerboard topically we've covered quite a, a number of events that have been governed by the 4321 string group in the case of the initial parental form this E diminished by the same token B flat diminished by the same token C sharp or D flat diminished and also G diminished one of the things on the guitar especially idiomatically idiomatically speaking in the jazz genre rhythm and blues genre bebop and so on and f so forth certain groupings for voicings of chords in their own right have been governed by a number of string groups that are kind of passive to some other, some other forms such as fusion um, in this particular case this group 4321 is an adjacent group in other words the strings in, them, in their own accord are adjacent to one another they're in a row four three two and one another uh, example of the same phenomenon is going to take place on the inside four strings which would be five four three two and in this particular case they would be functioning in this context and by the same token everything that has happened in with the four three two one with automatic dispersal of all of these children of this parental form by lowering any single tone uh, on each of the strings one half step down it also becomes the root of the dominant seventh chord in that family on the fifth string it's D flat this time now it's C seventh which is a different inversion of the four three two one group but the same chord back to the diminished by lowering the G to G flat we have a G flat dominant seventh on the four, on the five four three two group back to the diminished B flat to A is your A seventh back to the diminished E to E flat is this configuration of the E flat seventh so now we have eight forms uh, four keys here four keys here of the same grouping the next adjacent group would be here adjacent because now there's six five four three group these are the strings in use by lowering any single tone in this group the G to a G flat gives us this very fat sounding dominant seventh chord G flat seven a lot of use in terms of pumping uh, uh, a really dynamic kind of uh, pulsating very pulsating form as a cluster so here's your G flat seventh coming from this diminished chord G diminished in this case if I lower the D flat of that diminished chord to a C 
see. Here's my C7. Okay. The next one will be the E flat seventh. E to E flat. Back to the diminished chord. The A seventh would come from the B flat to the A natural. These are all of the adjacent groups. One more time as the, the diminished chords themselves. Three adjacent groups. If we then take that first 4, 3, 2, 1 group and take what is automatic from it, such as these two strings being totally the same, only two octaves in difference, we then place that there and what's left is this. Again, this automatically inverts itself with the same fingering up the neck. And in this particular case, we're going to call these non-adjacent groups because they're not in a row. There are certain strings that are not being used. In the case of this voicing, 6, 4, 3, 2, the fifth string is dead or blunt. The other adjacent group of the five common groups would be 5, 3, 2, 1. And in the same, according to all of the other, other information that has led us to this, by lowering any single tone, it becomes the root of a dominant seventh chord. D flat to C, C seventh. B flat to A, A seventh. E to E flat, E flat seventh. G to G flat, G flat seventh. And that's on a 5 3 2 1 group. On a 6 4 3 2 group, non adjacent as spoken of. G to G flat. G flat seventh. E to E flat. E flat seventh. B flat to A. A seventh. C sharp to C. C seventh. In the case of this particular group, uh, you're going to find that in doing this, coming from the diminished parental form, you can lower it to a dominant seventh. That if you lower the third, you have an automatic um, minor seventh in that group. If you take that at the dominant seventh, as it was, and raise that seventh, you'll have a major seventh. These formations are uh, uh, appropriately termed for the idioms that I brought up to your attention prior to this moment uh, in jazz and in rhythm and blues. You will see that uh, in, in many jazz forms, you're going to hear a major seven chord like that. Or if you take the fifth once it's altered to that and lower that, you'll have a major seven flat five, which sounds like this. If you take it from the dominant seventh, from the diminished to the dominant seventh, and lower the, the third, you'll have the minor seventh. And if you lower that fifth, you'll see another common form, a common group from, from these forms, uh, used in jazz quite a bit. Uh, a minor seventh flat five. In this particular case, we took it from G diminished to G flat seventh to G minor seventh to G minor seventh flat five. By the same token, all of the inversions that came automatically from these parental forms will act accordingly to enhance your repertoire of forms for your future engagements. Second inversion, G to G flat, G flat seventh. Taking the third of that G flat seventh, which in this particular case is the B flat, lowering that, here's your G flat minor seventh. If you take the fifth of that, which is the D flat, and lower that, you're going to have the G minor 7 flat 5 here now.
back to the diminished chord. 6, 4, 3, 2, group, the third in inversion. We place the G up here to G flat. Here's your G flat seventh. If you lower the third, which is here now, you have your G flat minor seventh here. And if you lower the, the perfect fifth a half step, you have your third inversion automatically of that particular form. Back to the diminished parent. We're going to lower the G to a G flat. Here's your dominant seventh. Lower the third. In this particular case, B flat to A. Here's your minor seventh, G flat minor, uh, minor seventh. And take the, the fifth, which is the uh, D flat. Now you see you have four automatic inversions of another family of forms used uh, quite commonly in uh, another kind of uh, you know uh, idiom of jazz. So by the same token, the way these formations cluster themselves on areas of the fingerboard, um, going in ascent across the board, so that you have uh, 12 frets from an open to a double fret at the 12th fret, the octave. Uh, you now have every area of, of activity governed by these potentials.